Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. So uh, I did get new glasses and they have this blue chip shit in them that you can clearly see off the reflection whenever I move my head, which is really weird. But um, anyway, I think I'm just going to take them off just because I don't know that could get annoying. But um, I wanted to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers, man, because um, they are in a very, very weird situation where... Um, Right now, they're kicking teams' asses, and in their last 10 games, they have won seven of them, and you could argue that those three games they've lost was only one of two reasons why they lost the game. One, Joel Embiid or James Harden didn't play, or two, they just committed an ass ton of turnovers. I mean, specifically against Oklahoma City, they lost the game. Granted, SGA went off for 37 points. But they turn the ball over 17 times. Um, and it's very hard to win games when you do that. Um, but this is a team that's just very interesting to me. Because they started off the year not so hot. Um, and then it, it seems like now Joel Embiid and James Harden are finally gelling. Like they're finally figuring out how to play together. Um, but this is a team that doesn't really have a lot of depth. Um, when it comes to defense, they're locking teams down. They're fourth in the NBA right now in defensive rating and 11th in offensive rating. The biggest problem with this team, though, is whenever James Harden and Joel Embiid come off the floor at the same time, their offense really, really suffers. I mean, they're shooting the shit out of the three-point shot. I'm going to call it what it is, man. This is probably one of the best three-point shooting teams in the NBA. I mean... Shake Melton and DeAnthony Melton are just killing it from three. James Harden shooting decent from three. Uh, Georges Niang, who was a guy who was in my doghouse last year because I thought he absolutely sucked, uh, is shooting like 40% from three. He's actually got the highest three-point shooting percentage on their team. Um, Matisse Thibel is a guy that I could see them trading or just not bringing back. I mean, he's still shooting 33% from three. Um, the, the, the shooting is still absolutely abysmal. Great defensive player, horrendous offensive player. Um, uh, Montrez Harrell hasn't exactly been what you would have liked to see out of a guy coming off the bench. Um, but... You know, it's still Montrez Harrell. Um, a lot of times it feels like, uh, in specifically with this team, um, Tyrese Maxey is the guy that it seems like they're playing as a sixth man. Um, a lot of times, like, yeah, Tyrese Maxey will start. You know, like, the starting lineup will consist of, like, Harden, Maxey, Tobias Harris, and, and Embiid. But as the game goes on, it's like they cycle Maxey in and out with the bench unit, and... He's pretty much their sixth man, but also their, also their starter. It's, it's really weird, but it, it's working for them. And this is a team that I'm just like, the more I watch them play, the more I'm like, okay, they're, they're finally getting into what we thought they could be. You know, a team that actually contends for a championship. And, uh, you know, they could really, really use more bench depth. Like they, they could, like they got shooters off the bench. That's not the problem. But they really need somebody at the point guard position. I mean, right now it's Tyrese Maxey because he can play point and, sh and scoring guard. So, yeah, getting Tyrese Maxey was huge for them um, in the draft. And just his, his um, you know, development as a player has been very beneficial to them. Um, and also not having to give him up in order to get James Harden was a huge win at this point, if you ask me for them. Um, but the power forward spot and even the, the backup center spot, um, really need some work. Um, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Paul, I, I want to say it's Paul Reed, but I could be getting that wrong. Reed, their backup center, um, has, hasn't exactly been ideal. Um, you know, they're a team that could really just benefit from some more bench scoring, you know, like, yeah, they, they got a lot of guys that go out there and just stroke three pointers. But when James Harden comes out of the game and Joel Embiid is not, in the game, they struggle to get shit around the basket. I'm just going to call it what it is. Like, they, they take threes, they're making threes, but this is a team that's like, if they go out and have a bad shooting night for whatever reason, like, chances are they're going to lose the game. Like, if they're not stroking it well from three chances are they're going to lose. Um, because once James Harden comes out of the game and Joel Embiid is just like, Joel Embiid does most of his damage from inside the paint, so they don't really have anybody going to the basket to like score buckets in there because that's Joel Embiid's job. But 
coming off the bench, they could really benefit from a guy like Karis LeVert. Um, and it feels so weird because I feel like every time I make one of these videos, it's like, you know, if there's a guy to get to the basket, it's Kar Karis LeVert for me. But Karis LeVert is just that good. You know what I'm saying? Karis LeVert's a guy that could, they, I don't know, maybe... Um, the Philadelphia 76ers can put something together to get him and uh, let him come off the bench and be their guy who gets stuff around the basket. But like either that or like a center like Jackson Hayes, I know is going to probably be available for the Pelicans seeing as he's not getting much burn anymore. Like it, I'm going to be honest, if Philadelphia could pull off like Jackson Hayes and, uh, you know, put him next to a guy like maybe Montrez Harrell or or trade Montrez Harrell for, for two guys of similar caliber. I don't know. Montrez Harrell went from being like a six man of the year candidate to like whatever the hell he is now, which is like a shell of his former self. But it's really in the front court. They're struggling, not so much at the guard position. Um, they could, they, they, it's just like they have shooters on their bench, but like I said, they need a playmaking point guard. They need a guy who can get shit around the basket. They could really use a different center, like backup center. Like they need some depth, but so far the depth has been add Tyrese Maxey to the shooters you have and just shoot a shit ton of threes. And so, so far it's working. This is a team that I feel like around the trade deadline is going to try to add something to their roster. What that something is, I don't know, but TJ McConnell is going to be out there. Um, Karis LeVert's going to be out there. Jackson Hayes is going to be out there. I don't really know what they could offer to bring some of these guys in. Um, they'll probably offer Matisse Thibel to somebody. Um, the Pacers really need perimeter defense, and Matisse Thybul is like one of the better defenders in the league. He's just a shitty offensive player, so I don't really know if the Pacers would be a candidate for Matisse Thybul, um, but like... They got a lot of guys on their roster that I'm just like, they're either not going to come back or they really need to add to what they currently have. And uh, I, I don't really know how this whole thing is going to go. They got Montrez Harrell on kind of what seems like um, a bargain contract deal because he got into some type of legal issue in the beginning of the year. I think I actually covered it. I just don't remember what it is, but... It's just the idea, this is a team that, if they add the right pieces to it, they could potentially be, like, um, a fringe playoff team. Or, not a fringe playoff team, my bad. Fringe contender team. Um, right now, they're fourth in the Eastern Conference, and they are, they're balling. I'm gonna call it what it is, man. Like, you watch this team play, they shoot threes and they make them, and they, they do a pretty good job of locking down on defense. So... Um, you know, I guess, I guess th there's things in the world that could be worse. Like a guy that would really benefit them is OG Ananobi. Um, I don't know if they can maybe trade Tobias Harris, even though Tobias Harris is balling this year. I, I will call it what it is. I got to give him his flowers in this video. Um, even though Tobias Harris is playing very well, his contract is not beneficial to this team whatsoever. And for a team like Toronto that is maybe looking to hit reset, maybe you get OG An Ananobi for a Tobias Harris and maybe a pick or so a draft pick or, or you know, Matisse Thibel and Tobias Harris or something like that. Like, just, just to unload that giant contract onto somebody. I don't know who. Maybe the Spurs. Maybe the Spurs give you um, Josh Richardson and a Doug McDermott type of guy for for. Uh, Tobias Harris, but um, Tobias Harris is a great player for them. It's just his contract really sucks, and I feel like Tobias Harris's contract is what's really hindering this team. Um, you know, I'm not an advocate for getting rid of Tobias Harris at this point because he's playing very well for them. But, like, he's a guy that it's like, um, I don't know if he's on an expiring deal or not. That's actually a very interesting question. I kind of want to look that up right now. Uh, it's to your, Tobias Harris. What's his contract look like? Um... Is he in his final year? I think he is. I could be wrong. Um, but... Right now, he is... So, he's locked in... For, for for another two years. Jesus. Five years, 180 million in 2019. Yeah, that was that was a steep steep pay climb for him. So yeah, he's he, he's got two years left on his deal this year and next year. And this year it's 37 million. Next year it's 39 million. Um, so I don't know, man. I'm not a huge advocate for for trading him because he's he's playing very well at the moment. I mean for the. The 76ers this year, 
Um, he's played 39 games. He's shooting 49% from the field and 37% from three and 87% from the free throw line. So, you know, I, I, I can't really be too mad about that. I mean, he's scoring 16 points a game, um, which is a pretty hefty price to pay for a guy who's only scoring 16 a game, like 16 and a half. I mean, he's getting one steal a game, uh, about six and a half rebounds, but that's, that's pretty much it. Two, two and a half assists, we'll call it. Um, he doesn't turn the ball over a lot, which is very good, but yeah, the amount of bread they paid him to, uh, come play ball in Philly was a whole lot. And, uh, Honestly, it's it's hindering this team in a depth perception wise. But um, if they can keep this up, um, they're they're gonna make it probably to the second round. You know, like because James Harden and Joel Embiid are known for just getting bounced in the second round. This is a team that I don't think is gonna make the finals. If they do, I'd be a little shocked. Um, but they could really benefit from a, a couple guys like Grant Williams would be a nice guy for them. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple guys that they could really target that would really, really help them. Cameron Johnson, Cam Johnson would be a nice guy. Um, you know, he, we kind of, I, I think Cam Johnson's going to get paid at this point, but you know, maybe you can make an enticing offer to the Phoenix Suns being that they're not playing very well this year for a guy like Cam Johnson, bring him in and bring him off the bench, uh, for now. Um, there's a lot of things this team could do. Um, you know, I, I don't know is, I don't know if Montrez Harrell is actually starting for them. I think Tobias Harris is the guy starting for them. I could be wrong, but this is a team, man, that just, they really need some depth. Um, they, they desperately need some depth. And, uh, so right now, Georges Niang is starting for them. And Montrez Harrell is the guy that, um... Actually, no, he's not starting. So it's PJ Tucker is the one starting for them. So, yeah, if they if they could get maybe another guy like you know Grant Williams, who seems like he's the next PJ Tucker, um, it would be very beneficial to them. And PJ Tucker shooting thirty eight percent from three, man. Like this whole team has got guys just shooting the lights out from three. It's just, yeah, Paul Reed is averaging three points a game and three and a half rebounds. Like, they, they really need some help down there at the center position. Um, I understand Joel Embiid's playing 34, well, basically 35 minutes a game, but we need to get Joel Embiid some help down there um, just so he can get a break. Uh, but you know what? It is what it is, man. Uh, tell me what you guys think about this down below in the comment section below. What like helps me out, subscribe if you guys want to see more on the Fast Break Report. And I'm um, out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.